No, nebo nebo nebo. We now have a green light. I will now call to September 19, 2012, Blue Spring City Council meeting to order. We will stand, observe a moment of silence, and then I will lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. seated. I want to welcome those of you in attendance as well as those that might be watching on cable TV 7 to tonight's City Council meeting. The next item is the consent agenda. Are there items that need to be pulled? If I don't, I accept a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Cabell? Aye. Councilman Levison? Aye. Councilman Fowler? Aye. Councilman Carter? Aye. Councilman Edmondson? Aye. Councilman Bowerman? Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Next we have the public hearing on 2020. Oil tax levy. Mr. Johnson. Your Honor, I'd like to introduce one exhibit which includes City Council information form from Assistant City Administrator Christine Cates proposing the tax levy for 2012 as 0 0.7489 per 100 assessed valuation with attachments. Notice of 2012 aggregate assessed valuation from Jackson County. Affidavit of publication is advertised in Examiner September 8, 2012, and Bill number 4237 establishing tax levy for for 2012. These are all the exhibits I have to offer on this public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Ms. Gates. Uh, the ordinance before you this evening proposes to set the 2012 property tax levy at 74.89 cents per $100 assessed valuation. 2012 was not a reassessment year, so the values for the majority of the property within Blue Springs remains at the same values as they were in 2011, which was a reassessment year. The total assessed valuation for 2012 um, for the City of Blue Springs is $726,531,839, which is a 1.14% increase over 2011. The majority of that increase, um, since it is in a reassessment year, was from the, is new, due, to, due to new construction of $7.7 million. And the majority of that amount can be attributed to the Coles Distribution Center, who paid off their Chapter 100 bonds this year and became fully taxable for the first time this year. So that project, I think, that was approved in 1988 or, or 1999 or 98 is completed this year and paid in full. So they're on the tax rolls. Uh, let's see. Under the Hancock Amendment, the city would be able to roll up the levy this year uh, 0.0032 cents or approximately one-third of a penny. Uh, the impact of not rolling the levy up is approximately 15000 to our entire $72 million proposed budget. The, the 2012-13 budget that um, is before you tonight for the second reading was prepared based on uh, leaving the levy the same as we're proposing and recommending to do tonight. So the budget that's um, being adopted includes this levy. Uh, let's see. Um, so that, just to reiterate, the, two, the levy that we're proposing tonight is the same as 2011. 2013 will be a reassessment year and will um, likely have changes throughout the city on values and then um, we may be looking at a different proposal for next year. Let's see. I think that's everything. Okay. Are there any questions? Of council? Ms. Gates? Okay. No, thank you. I, just clarification. No change. No change this no year. No change. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll take it to the public. Anyone like to speak in favor of? In favor of and opposition to, opposition to, we we'll close this public hearing. Who would like to introduce it? I introduce it, Your Honor. Okay. First reading of Bill Number 4237, an ordinance <coughs> establishing the tax levy for 2012. Move the bill be approved on its first reading and proceed with the second. The second. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Discussion. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Your Honor, I'll just pass on to staff. The, appreciate them taking on the challenge. Uh, they they left some on the table there, and I appreciate the. The aggressiveness that they're taking. So, okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Second reading of Bill Number 4237, an ordinance establishing the tax levy for 2012. Move the bill be approved on the second reading and assign the appropriate ordinance number. There's a second. Second. Discussion. Roll call. 
Councilman Levesay? Aye. Councilman Fowler? Aye. Councilman Carter? Aye. Councilman Edmondson? Aye. Councilman Bowerman? Aye. Councilman Cobell? Aye. Carry unanimously giving it ordinance number 4413. Next we have a second reading of Bill 4235 approving the 2012-2013 annual budget for the City of Blue Springs. Second reading of Bill number 4235 as amended. Uh, an amended ordinance appropriating from the revenue of the City of Blue Springs, Missouri, expenditures in accordance with the 2012-2013 annual budget of the City of Blue Springs, Missouri. Move the bill be approved on its second reading and, and assign the appropriate ordinance number. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Councilman Fowler? Yes, Your Honor. Um, last council meeting at the first reading, there was a question about, I brought up that uh, from 2005 to 2011, our city debt went from 20 million up to 101.8 million. And the question was, is how much of that 101 million is voter approved? Uh, did follow up with staff on that. As it turns out, it's not the majority, but actually the minority that is voter approved. Only, well, actually less than one third uh, is voter approved. The rest of it is, is all council approved. Um, again, that, that is a concern to me, the growing debt in the city. In the same time that we had a five-fold increase from 20 million to 100 million, um, that's, the national economy didn't didn't pick up debt to that extreme as a matter of fact our neighbor at Lee summit they were actually at 100 million in 2005 and actually decreased down to 90 million by 2011 so in the same time frame they actually took a 10 percent cut versus a 500 percent increase for us so i think we've got to look hard at the, our future debt and uh, work towards reducing it any other discussion seeing none roll call please Councilman Fowler? No. Councilman Carter? Aye. Councilman Emerson? Aye. Councilman Bowerman? Aye. Councilman Cobell? Aye. Councilman Levesay? Aye. Uh, ordinance carries, giving it ordinance number 4413. That brings us to mayoral announcements. Tonight comes from, well, thoughts to find it. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go to the announcements. Tonight's comes from Nelson Mandela. Let freedom reign. The sun never set on so glorious a human achievement. Profound. Now, uh, to the mayoral announcements that, you know, it's with sadness that we uh, inform uh, maybe our viewing audience. I think most of the people in the audience here know that we lost our public works director last Friday evening, uh, Oliver the Great. And certainly that was an unexpected, untimely, uh, shock to a lot of us when I received a message on Saturday morning. It's, it was just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Arrangements, and I want to thank Chris Sandy, his deputy, for stepping up to the plate, working with the family, you know, to show city support. And so I'm going to defer to Mr. Johnson and to Chris Sandy for specific announcements concerning uh, Oliver and his family. Okay. Your Honor, thank you. Um, Obviously, very devastating and very tragic. And as you can imagine, the, um, the city workforce, many citizens and members of this community and stakeholders that have known Oliver, who has worked for the city of Blue Springs since 1993 and um, has built most of this city or touched it in many ways. Councilman Fowler, you've worked with him up mm -hmm. here longer than anyone. And um, he was a uh, humble man had tremendous character, was a big teddy bear at times, but also you know that he would stand his ground and when, when pushed, he would make very wise and careful decisions for this community and this organization that were based upon uh, good data. From time to time, he would love to throw out the word theorem and he'd like to uh, uh, use his uh, PhD skills to wow people, but but I'll never forget how he so eloquently stood in front of us and you and explained the street maintenance overlay program mm -hmm. and how that program that you have adopted would change the course of this community's infrastructures for years to come and how he took something that was so complicated and boiled it down into a handwritten chart that was ex very eloquent and very simple. So we are gonna miss him. We have a lot of people in this organization that are grieving, but we also understand that we will move forward and that we will continue to serve you and the citizens of this community. But we want to honor him and we want to pay respects to him and his family. That said, Chris has worked with his family to um, organize a memorial service for Oliver, which will be this Friday evening at the Adams Point Conference Center. 
The family is coordinating this service, and at Oliver's request, it's going to be very simple and very, very humble. Very humble. Uh, the, the service starts at 6 o'clock and is probably not going to last much more than 30 minutes. So if you're late, you may miss it. So um, we want to honor the family and honor Oliver, and so it is, it is open uh, to the members of this organization and to people who may have known Oliver. So I just want you to be aware of that and uh, just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Anyone else like to make any comments? Um, I'm going to miss Oliver, too. And it didn't take many days, Chris, in the transportation industry that I work, people that have known him for a long time uh, throughout the metro area and, and other places. And I was very touched when engineers from MoDOT and cities called me because they know my connection. I live here, but also in my profession. And they just couldn't say anything but good about Oliver and how they felt our loss. So, and I appreciate, again, Chris, uh, all the work you do, and, and we offer you whatever support we need in the interim period. So, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Yeah. Your Honor, just to uh, give you yes. an idea of how well he was respected, we just came back from Tantera and the MML conference, and from city to city, people ask us, you know, uh, who didn't know, how's Oliver? And, and we told them, you know, the news, and then they were as devastated as we are. Uh, and again, to echo what Grant said, no one would say a bad thing about him. Lovable man. We'll miss him. I'm going to make you reading my mind. It's exactly what I was going to close with. Is, and we all witnessed that down, yes. down at the conference. Councilman yeah. Fowler. Yeah, Your Honor, I second everything that said. Uh, he, uh, he came to the position during a time uh, when we needed, we needed to really be more respected technically. And he really brought that immediately to the table, technically there, professionally. Uh, he, he gained, you know, we gained in stature in the development community because of Oliver the Great. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before we uh, adjourn? Okay. Uh, certainly, if it would be nice if you could, 6 o'clock, to, to try to come Friday evening to Adams Point Conference Center, uh, just to show our support to the family. That concludes the mayoral announcements. We have an executive session. Uh, I don't have any visitors appearance forms for anyone that would like to speak. So we're going to uh, accept a motion to go in executive session, discuss pending litigation pursuant to section 610.021 uh, of the revised statutes of Missouri. Is there a motion? So moved, Your Honor. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Carter. Councilman Edmondson? Aye. Councilman Bowerman? Aye. Councilman Cabell? Aye. Councilman Levesse? Aye. Councilman Fowler? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we're going to go into executive session, so we will ask our visitors to be excused while we prepare to go into executive session, discuss the matters that has been indicated in the motion.